God. What, what he said was this. He said, he said, he was older. And he said, Wallahi, if you ask me to describe the face of the Prophet wasallam, I can't. Why? He said, because every time I came to look at him, his face filled my eyes with awe. With, with an, he had an aura on him that I just was shy to keep staring at his face. I had to look down. You know, that, that type of a face. So much respect that I, I felt he is much, much bigger than me. And something would, 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 would fall upon my chest that I, I had to look down out of respect for him. And at the same time, I used to have this strong, strong urge, this love to want to look at his face because he was so beautiful. It was so magnetizing. And I used to struggle each time. I'd go back home depressed and I'm just grabbing my head thinking, what am I going to do? I want to look at him and I can't look at him. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So let us now go back to the younger companions who looked at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, little kids, they don't have this thing of, you know, the, if, if they respect someone, what do they do? They stare at him more. They think someone's has him, they stare at you. That's why they say things. What are you staring at? They're not trying to be rude. It's natural. It's their fitrah. So the best descriptions we can get about the face of the Prophet are from two types of people. The children who were raised among the Prophet who were close to him and some of the women. <laughs> and mostly his wives. But also other women. There's an old woman who met him. It's from Anas ibn Malik. Ibn Anas ibn Malik is one of the youngest companions of the Prophet He lived for 10 years of his life with the Prophet How many years? 10 years. Because the Prophet died when Anas was 10. And he lived on for a very long time, Anas ibn Malik. So he said, I heard Anas ibn Malik عنه, describing the Messenger وسلم, He said, he was of average height. Not too tall and not too short, with a pinkish color. Now I'm going to go back to the Arabic word because I'll tell you what that means. Not very white and not dark. And his hair was neither very curly nor very straight. So it was long curls. People go to the hairdressers to do that these days. And something amazing about it, I loved his hair, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'll describe it to you a little bit more. And his hair was neither very curly nor very straight. The revelation came to him when he was 40 years old and he stayed in Mecca for 10 years after the revelation came. Then in Medina for 10 years, when he died, there were no more than 20 white hairs on his head and in his beard. 63 years old, no more than 20 white hairs in his head and in his beard. So his beard was still and his hair was still dark, dark black. Like, I mean, it was so dark black that some companions said, we can almost see a touch of blue in it. Because it shined. It was that beautiful. His hair was extremely thick and full with volume. Thick and full with volume. And he normally had it long. Now let me describe to you what one companion said. He said his hair often reached the earlobes from the sides of his ears and from the back it touched his shoulders. Sometimes it would curl slightly on his shoulders. Slick, beautiful, dark, black, not too curly, not too straight, but long curls that came to his ear, curled slightly on his shoulders. If he'd cut it, he used to cut it about to his ears and then it would grow. Unless he was on Hajj or Umrah, then he would shave it off. And his hair, he would comb it back, use olive oil, and then it would naturally part in the middle, naturally, because it had so much volume that it parts slightly in the middle and rest. If it parted in the middle, he'd leave it, but he wouldn't deliberately part it in the middle. So what does it tell you about the type of hair he had? Very rich volume hair that is so beautiful, actually. So beautiful. It will blow in the wind, but it, but it won't just go all over the place, nor is it strong enough for the wind not to move it. And that was his hair, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had a wide forehead. His hair started on a high line, and he had a nice line across his forehead. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Uh, Al Bara ibn Azib said, "The Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam was broad-shouldered and had thick hair coming down to his shoulders and earlobes." He was wearing red garments. He used to wear a red garment. He said one time he was wearing a red garment and a bit of his hair came onto his red garment and it contrasted his hair with his face in the red garment. He said, I swear by Allah, I have never seen anything more beautiful than him. In another hadith he said, he came into the masjid wearing a red garment and his hair extended onto his red garment. I could see it slightly. I looked at his face his hair, his red garment, and there was a full moon. He said, Wallahi, I, look, I was looking at the full moon and looking at his face. Looking at the full moon, looking at his face, and he said, Wallahi, his face was more attractive than the full moon. It hypnotized me more. It looked more beautiful to look at. Now the Prophet Sallallahu skin color, when they say pinkish, the Arabs use different expressions to what we use today. They say he was white. And sometimes they say not too white. White is not the Caucasian white that you see in the Europeans today or the British. Not that type of white that we use today. When the Arabs said white, it means he had a tan. He was a light brown. With a light pinkish complexion upon his cheeks. And some ulama said, closer to an olive color in general. It was silky, his skin. And it wasn't too dark, like a rustic dark, nor was it a too white. It was in between. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ali radiallahu anhu said, now he was also uh, small, he was about 10 years old when he became a Muslim, he said, he was neither tall nor short, and had large hands and feet. He had big fingers, big feet, thick hands, thick skin on his palms, but very, very silky. Even though he always used his hands to work with, but they weren't rough for some reason. The Prophet's hands were one of those rare hands. He'd work so hard, carry rocks and chop everything. He used to fight with the sword, everything. But his hands stayed silky and very cool. Everybody who describes Prophet's hand, they say, when his hand touched our face or our neck or our hand, it was cool. You're talking about 40 to 50 degrees Celsius desert. His hands were always cool and the soles of his feet were always cool. Everybody loved to touch his feet. They wanted to touch their face, their, all of that. And it was silky and, and soft, but thick skin, thick, because he used them a lot. He said he had a large head. Now, you might be thinking, large head, what's that? We use it to insult someone. No, no, no. When you're describing someone's beauty, a big face, a wide face, a big head is really, really nice, actually. Especially on a man. It looks really, really nice. There's this show, they call it uh, Durilis er, 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 Erdul, Erdul, that Turkish film. Everybody's into it. Come on, don't act like you don't know. Don't act like you don't know, all right? You all watch it, don't you? Hands up if you watch it. Go out and see the sisters as well. I can't see them, but I think they're putting their hands up as well. This one, you see the warriors? They've all got big heads, right? Wide eyes. When a, when a face is wide, the beauty is greater because it fills your eye. And that's what they mean by the Prophet's head being large, meaning it filled the eye and it had a lot of beauty in it. You could see a lot of the beauty and it carried a lot of color, a lot of beauty. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said he, he was big boned, strong bones. So he wasn't fat, but he had a big solid build because his bones were big and thick. He was a very strong man. And thick bones tells you that there is high levels of testosterone, which means that he was strong, he was brave. He was truly a man. Um, he said he had a thin line of hair starting from his chest and extending to the navel. Uh, just a thin line. A thick, thin line. Not too hairy, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he walked, he would lean forward as if he was walking downhill. The reason for that is because he used to walk quickly. He had long strides. He'd lift his feet right off the ground. He wouldn't drag them like laziness. And he would have a fast walk because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never wasted time. He always made use of his time. And when he turned to someone, he turned his whole body, not just his head. Because he gave everybody importance. He said, he will lean forward when he walks, as if he was walking downhill. I have never seen anyone like him before or since. That's Ali Radulana saying, I've never seen anyone like him. 
Jabir radiallahu says, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was dali'ul fam. The Arabic language for dali'ul fam is he was wide mouthed. He didn't have a small mouth, nor a very big mouth, but he was wide mouthed. So his, his mouth was full, his lips were full, and they were wide. When he spoke, you could see even if a deaf person, why is, why is it wide? The deaf person could understand the speech of the Prophet ﷺ because his mouth had a lot of character in it, his lips. And people could understand him from a distance. He spoke very clearly, he moved his mouth well, he was very articulate ﷺ. He was also Ashkalul Ain. Ashkalul Ain means he, he was big eyed. Now when we say big eyed, again we're talking about beauty. He had wide eyes. Big eyes that filled his eyes and they were long. He had long eyelashes that were curled and thick. As if they had been mascarred with kuhl. But he had natural kuhl upon his eyes, that strong Arab look, that desert look. You can see that Rasulullah had that. But his eyes were wide, long eyelashes, and his iris, the iris and the pupil was dead black with a slight pinkish color on the edges. I can't imagine that. And the white part was very white. When anyone looked at his eyes, they magnetized them. Yet difficult to describe. As Ali Radalana says, I have never seen the likes of his features ever before, nor after. He was manhus al atib which means his meat bones were not fleshy. He didn't have fat on them. He didn't have a wide, a, a round face. In another hadith, he says, nor did he have a thin face, but in between. But but the eyes, if they were wide, he had a wide, wide cheekbone. Therefore, a wide face. His beard was full. And extended down, covering his chest, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Full, thick, black beard, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Very beautiful to look at. Very beautiful to look at. His eyebrows were well shaped and extended beyond his eyes. People love to have eyebrows like that, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In another hadith it says, his nose was thin with a small hook in the top. Now, I remember when people draw cartoon figures as heroes, they put a tiny hook in the top. That is, that is a sign of manliness and leadership. Usually you see, you see um, leaders and, and heroes being drawn like that actually, or depicted like that. The Prophet wasallam, the most beautiful feature of the Prophet wasallam was when he smiled, by far. The smile of the Prophet wasallam was the most beloved thing to the companions and to anyone who saw him. They said, when Rasulullah smiled, we felt that Jannah was on earth and the sun had shined upon us. Everybody felt amazing, like they didn't live on earth. When the Rasul وسلم, smiled, they used to say, we could wallahi swear as if sunshine was coming out of his face, literally. We could almost see as though we are reflecting off him. His teeth, did not have gaps in them. Uh, sorry, his teeth had a slight, slight gaps in them, which indicates that he had very beautiful breath, actually. He didn't have teeth that, that stuck in between them, but very slight. And they were white, very white. They describe the whiteness in different ways. Kalu'lu'a, they used to say, like pearl. Rasulullah truly had very white and clean teeth all the time. That was, that was a big thing for him. It was so big that once he wanted to marry this woman, and he sent... Um, a jariya, one of uh, the, uh, the maids, to go and, and, and check her out for him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, go and check her out for me, and I want you to get close to her mouth and smell her breath. I want a, I want a nice breath. That's what, that was important to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even when his companions used to enter the masjid, some of them used to have, you know, like dark yellow teeth and so on from lack of brushing. And he used to say, what is wrong that I see, you know, dark stains on your teeth. Use this, the miswak. In other words, use your toothbrush and, and, and clean your teeth. 
So the Prophet ﷺ, this was a big thing for him. When he smiled, his teeth would show only. When he was extremely happy, his gums would show as well. And when you know that he is extremely happy, his gums would show. And he would rarely do a qahqah, where you laugh, qahqah, loud laughing. And so Prophet ﷺ never was heard to loud laugh. Ever. It's not haram, but for him وسلم, he never loud laughed. The other companions loud laughed and the Prophet would smile along. He would smile along with them, encourage him, say it's okay. I'm trying to imagine Umar al Khattab's laugh. What a qahqah he would have. And how the reaction of the Prophet وسلم, was because he has such a humor. He had a humor.